Hello, I'm Grandmaster Ben Feingold. Rawr. Today we're going to talk about this position. A lot of you blunder in that position. When chess tactics happen, you see the tactic, you don't solve it, the computer shows you the right answer, and you're like, oh yeah, that's right. But you have to know how the tactic was born. Okay, it takes nine months, right? Always play King B1. I was giving a lesson once, and my student didn't do that. And when I recommended it, he said, oh, that's no good. You shouldn't move your knight again. The opening principles are principles, but taking pieces is taking pieces. Ten years later, I was like, remember when I beat you? And he said, did I play that? And I said, yeah, and he went, oh. How old was Bobby when you played him? Yeah, 11. Yeah. Uh, that's what? How yeah. is that fair? What? How is it fair? <laughs> There's 11 year olds. I played a 10 year old last month and we drew and I was lucky. They played the no boom variation named after your favorite player variation. There are kids in this position who intentionally give away their night. We call those kids low rated. I have a lot of those kinds of games in this opening where we castle opposite sides we meet each other and the audience loves it. And then my blood pressure goes up. He might meet me. But I'll be up a bishop. King B1, G5, trying is the first step to failure. And he's like, hey, Karpov, if you take that, I'm going to play F6, forking your pieces. And Karpov said, no talking. King G7. The problem with bishop G7, which looks safer, is it's not very safe. That's, that's not safe. Black didn't hang material. Black didn't blunder. Black isn't down a queen. Black is just totally outplay. All of his pieces are worse than all of white's pieces. And by the way, Black wrote a book, very famous book, called Black is Okay. That's the name of his book. He shows that Black has, you know, is doing okay in chess. I guess he didn't put this game in his book. Check. Always play king b1. I'm not a big believer in white's attack. Also, what attack? So, after b4, white has one very obvious move. Knight b1, otherwise I take your knight. Anyway, he played knight d5. And I asked him after the game, did you think knight d5 was a good move? Or you just didn't like knight b1? He's like, yeah, I don't like knight b1. He's like, I'm not playing knight b1. So, knight d5 is the other move. The default was to sack a piece. He got a lot of compensation, except for one thing. Nope. No compensation. Right. So, and whenever I give a chess lecture, I say this almost every lecture. You'd like to checkmate your opponent. Your opponent would not like to get checkmate. Well, some of the people I've played. And now he played all bad moves. That's not a good idea. He played King B1, which is a bad move. If you're watching on my stream, King B1 is a good move. Okay. And after this, White has mate and one, which is good. You, with the wrong answer, I assume. You did good, because that was the wrong answer. So in this position, he played f3, which is bad. There's no, no grand match against with f3. So I'm like, oh, I can refute that. And then I just play all bad moves and I'm lost. If he takes my bishop, I have many moves that win. The nicest is knight d3 check. Threatening his queen, his bishop, his king, and queen c2 mate. Karen was playing, it was Rufus or Doofus, in, in the tournament yesterday. Mm -hmm. And you were up a piece, and you could trade rooks, and you did not trade rooks, and you doubled up on the bubble up, and then you baited him with your two rooks on the seventh. <laughs> and I was thinking, a lot of people just trade because they're up a piece, so that's what they do. And then I shake my head, okay? So they pay me for chess lessons. The truth hurts. 